Okay, so uh, we're just preparing to release a new film yeah. called Sparring Fundamentals. Yeah. And you wanted to make it clear when we named the film that it wasn't going to be a definitive, complete guide to sparring, but a kind of introduction. Yeah. Why, why do you think that people um, need an introduction to something like sparring? Because I think that uh, it's often a fight. And at the so, so it's it, there's no learning process within the sparring. Most people just go in. Uh, the various streams I've been at and watched training with the professionals is that they, and it was a case in Elm Street, is that it becomes a fight. And it doesn't become a learning experience. You know, you're only as good as, as I always say, the, guy, the guys who are taking part in the, in, in the spa. People, because there's no real direction, there's no way of dissembling, as it were, deconstructing the fight and, f and focusing on the various phases of the fight or aspects within those phases, that the, the student or the trainer, the, 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 the boxer or MMA fighter, never gets the real opportunity to work on skills. He usually does on, that do, works on those skills in a drill or a separate set, a shadow fight, or, or, or under some form of instruction. Whereas the, to can really contextualize it, you have to put it into the, con, the context in which it's going to be used and work on the skills. Define the skills you're going to work on in your mind, so to speak, and then work on them. So it almost sounds like you're talking about a form of deliberate practice for martial yeah, arts. Inaction. Yeah. Rather than in, 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 in rather than having deliberate action taken separate from the environment in which it's going to be displayed or used, put it in to the environment in which it's going to be used. You take the part out, work on the part, put it back in the car. You're always driving the car in effect, and you you could do it under the instruction of the trainer, like I was doing with you before. Is that we can work on the skill, and if we hit a skill that's not quite right, we can then quickly drill it technically, but then go back in. So you can then work on that aspect and put it back into a spa so you get a sense of how it will be used against me or even another person. It will always change. But you're getting a sense of it rather than drilling it into a specific thing. Right. And believing that that specific thing is going to work in the context of a fight. When it lacks the timing, it lacks all the other aspects of distance appreciation, it lacks all those other things and dynamic balance and things like that. It, it, it just doesn't contain them. Do you think that in a lot of martial arts clubs, the sparring becomes, if not actually too hard, then too easy? Too because easy. people are afraid of someone getting hurt, and so they back off. Yeah, there's insurance problems, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and there's obviously keeping your students. In our street, we only had six guys, five or six guys, and, and whatever came through the door. But it wasn't, it wasn't a lot, and that was really the, the catalyst, if you like, in my, my, watching guys get knocked out, or creaming guys. Or getting injuries, it, 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 somehow it doesn't make sense. It's still a natural image to fight, to to in the spa. You're even to go all out. Yeah, you're, and you actually hear people say, "I knocked him out," and, yeah. and you think, Ooh, "What lesson was actually learned in, in that in that process?" Because you actually didn't, you weren't actually addressing the skills you might actually have to use in your next bout, or those you might have to use in a fight in general. So when you made the film, what were some of the things that you were taking into consideration in designing the different methods that we see? In which way? When, when we made the film, like what, what were you thinking about when you were, when you were designing the drills? What? I mean, one thing that's noticeable ab about it is that it goes through, right the way through all the phases of the fight, which yeah. you usually see well, rolling as something yeah, separate. We, did, we didn't actually include all the phases, really. We didn't get to all the phases. What, what, what the film is about is one, having a, a learning attitude with regard to the spa. And two, uh, uh, two, knowing that you can set levels of intensity. That this film is, is, is basically a technical starter in that it, it, it is a low intensity, but it has, some re it, it has a strong reality uh, base to it in the sense that, there's, that, that it, it isn't devoid of reality. Mm -hmm. Obviously, as, as, the people be, as, as those who are taking part in this part become more uh, familiar with the, the ground rules, so to speak, they can intensify the action. It, I think it's interesting that your interpretation of low intensity is probably a lot of martial art practitioners' interpretation of high intensity, because I filmed it. And although I can see that you're saying it's low intensity in comparison to a fight, it's Pretty high intensity in comparison to a lot of well, what I've seen. By, in by intensity, what I mean is you can up the ante. You right. Can, you can put on a bigger glove, or you can you, you, you can decide mutually decide what's the agreement. 
we both understand what we're actually working on individually. So in other words, you, you, the, either the trainer knows that specifically for one of the individuals or both sparring partner knows what, what's going to have to happen. If, for example, if you got knocked out by a, last, a left hook in your last fight, it'd be a good idea to work on left hooks and not just work on a fight. Right. Because you're not actually specifically addressing the thing which you got knocked out by. And the more, the more that your sparring partner is able to replicate that, obviously the better. But something's better than nothing rather than going back and doing the spar again and actually just fighting and hoping that somehow you're going to figure out how to deal with another left hook. So you have to, you take the part out, work on the part and put it back in again to see if you've improved the performance of the car. And again, going back to deliberate practice, you're, you're having more opportunities to fail at something and fail and fail and fail, and fail, and fail until fail. you succeed. If you knock him out, now the spar's stopped. Right. So you've got to find a way of making the, far, the spar safe but realistic. That's why I like to use the shoulder, and obviously that can change as the beginning phase. That can change as, as the two the two partners become more familiar, and shots can be go to the head to the head. But because they're now familiar with the way to defend against the head, it's less likely that that shot's going to take place. And like when you see in the in, in the on the footage with myself and Mark Tobin, I as one of the sparer the, those who are sparring can decide if I am just going to work on my defense. Right. So it means that now, now I know what's basically coming. I'm set for it. I'm not caught open and being counted. Mm -hmm. I can actually work specifically on the defense, specifically on clinch work, specifically on footwork, specifically on evasion or whatever I want. And I also, within the film, that some shots we don't actually make contact. Because there can be something which is actually going off in your head rather than actually physically having to happen. So some shots, and obviously body shots all can. So, so it's no different from that in knockdown that you can still hit to the body and the legs. For, again, on an agreement at whatever level of intensity or power you want to do it. It's just that we found another way of including the head without actually hitting the head. You know, right. so the chin is a major target. And as a defensive, the chin, the, the the top of the head or the shoulder are the best ways with, with your guard of defending that, that target. If you are never given the opportunity or the direction by which to do that, you'll never learn how to do it. So it's an opportunity at the fundamental level of sparring to figure out what is essential to sparring and allows you to drive your car, if you like, at a, at a speed you can handle. And then as you become familiar, you can now drive it at higher speeds. We just have a couple more minutes, but there's just one other thing that I wanted to bring up, which was that you said to the guys in the film, I think specifically to Nick, that you can be in control of what you want to work on on a given day, day or a given moment, and the other guy doesn't even have no, to know no, anything about no, it. No. So that somehow the role of the fighter, the fighter it's becomes central to the intelligence of what's happening, yeah, and not just the, the coach telling the fighter if, everything. If he cheats, if he's saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on a, a right armbar, uh, whatever, or a left, or whatever he's going to work on, and he cheats and he goes to an ankle, then he's cheating himself. Yeah. He's, fine. He, he's trying to work on something where he will make a mistake, be able to identify the mistake, because he's, he's, he's actually specifically set to work on something. If he's fighting, he hasn't actually specifically set on anything other than not the other guy out. And so therefore, the limitations on that are always determined by the guy you're fighting. Right. So you have to be able to deconstruct it and then focus on the various elements of the fight, which, which, which might be your strong points, which you need to be able to use in a, use in a fight, but also those other, point, uh, those other elements which need to be worked on. And most people resist working on this. Most people resist working. They want to fight, or they don't want to fight, or they just want to play, or play mm -hmm. the game of tag, and believe that the game of tag is somehow replicate, uh, a representation of a fight. We have to make the fight, you know, as look, be a representation of the fight, but simply at a lower. They match. They match. There's not one thing, and it doesn't match how it might be kicking off in an MMA ring, a boxing right. ring, a Muay Thai ring, or even the street. So yeah, you're looking for a match, and you're looking to reinforce the the, the fast routes to the to, to the of the brain to those uh, scenarios or those situations which are, which, which which are needed as a response. Fast tracking it, but deliberately fast working on it. Okay, thank you. Good.